Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to find out what the three effects of electricity are. So we're going to perform some experiments to demonstrate each one of the three effects and by the end of the video you should be able to state what those three effects are. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to hear the answer to a common exam question. Let's get to our first experiment. So the first effect of electricity that we're going to discuss is the chemical effect of electricity. So that is effect number one, the chemical effect. What we've got set up on the desk in front of us is we've got a DC power supply. So that's going to output DC voltage for us. And then here we've got a beaker that is filled with a copper sulfate solution. Now what that basically means is that suspended inside this fluid are lots of little tiny uh, particles of copper. And what we're going to do is these two carbon probes that we've got sitting inside our beaker we're going to connect up the DC power supply to those and see what happens inside the solution. So I'm going to hold the probes and I'm going to make sure that these don't touch each other inside the copper sulfate solution because that would create a short circuit and uh, spoil what we're trying to show. And what I'll do is I'll ask my assistant here if they can turn up the voltage of our DC power supply. So the voltage will go up. Now keep your eye on the copper sulfate solution and let's see what happens. So as the voltage gets higher and higher and higher, you might start to see some bubbles forming around one of the carbon probes. And if you look at that on the left hand probe there, you can see that there is an awful lot of bubbles coming off that. So what we're seeing there is a chemical reaction inside the copper sulfate solution. When we analyse what's actually happening inside here in a moment, what we'll see is that there's tiny little flakes of carbon that are being removed from one of the probes. But also what's quite interesting is that, invisible to our eye at the moment, is that lots of those little copper uh, particles that are inside the copper sulfate solution are actually being drawn onto one of the probes as well. Which means that if we left this for long enough, what would happen is that a very thin film of copper would start to form on the surface of one of these probes. And that is the basic principle behind what we call electroplating. So the chemical reaction that we see in take place here is called electrolysis. And it's what happens when a current is introduced into, in this case, a copper sulfate solution uh, and current is passed through there. So you can clearly see now that this has been running for a couple of minutes. And you can see that on top of the surface there, there are lots and lots of little bits of carbon that have come away from one of these probes and that's having quite an intense effect. So what we'll do is we'll shut the power off to this now. So we'll turn the voltage back down again. And then we'll have a look at the probes themselves. So just before we remove the probes from the solution, I've taken the original footage and sped up the reaction considerably. So you can actually see a little bit more clearly exactly what's taking place inside that copper sulfate solution and watch just how much one of the probes grows as it attracts material to itself. Let's start that now. So let's remove our probes from the copper sulfate solution and see what they look like now. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is sort of a black film on top of the solution and that black film is little bits of carbon that have come away from here. So let's look at this, this rod first of all. Now again, at first glance it doesn't look like it's changed so much, but actually on removing it you can see that it's leaving traces of itself behind. So that one looks like that. And then the other one, if we take that out as well, Now what's actually started to happen, you can't really see from here, but tiny little bits of copper have started being deposited on the surface of this. And if we clean that up, we might even be able to see a slight change in colour on there as well. So there's only a very, very slight amount of colour change taking place here. And that's because we only had the probes inside the copper sulfate solution with the current connected up to it for a short period of time. If we left that in there for a long time, then we'd start to see uh, copper deposits laid on there much more evenly. So that's just a demonstration of the first effect of electricity and that is the chemical effect. Let's consider the next effect of electricity. The next effect of electricity that we're going to consider is the magnetic effect of electricity. 
So once again, I've got a DC power supply set up here. I've got a switch which is connected to a coil. Now the reason that we've introduced a coil into the circuit is that it intensifies uh, and makes more obvious the magnetic effect of electricity. So we've had our chemical effect and now we've got our magnetic effect. So let's see uh, how that works. First of all, if I hold down the switch, the circuit doesn't appear to change. But if I look at this little compass that I've got here, you can see that as I move it around, it's not really changing its position for north very much. So it's staying pretty true as a compass. However, if I now energize this circuit, you can see that the compass is affected by a new magnetic field. And that new magnetic field sits around this coil that we've created. Let's see if we can visualize this a little bit more clearly. We'll take the compass away. And what we'll now do is introduce our nail here, which is made out of iron. Now, iron is obviously a magnetic material, so hopefully we'll see some response between the iron nail and the magnetic field created by the coil. So let's push the switch. And you can see there that the nail is drawn into the magnetic field that is created around the coil, and even actually inside the coil. So we can see very clearly demonstrated there, we've now got our magnetic effect of electricity. So, so far we've seen the chemical effect and the magnetic effect, that leaves just one more effect of electricity, and we'll consider that next. So we've seen so far two of the effects of electricity. We've seen the chemical effect, and we've seen the magnetic effect. And what we're going to do now is look at the third effect, which is the thermal effect of electricity. Now, the thermal effect of electricity is an interesting one because we use it for an awful lot of things, which we'll explain in a later video. But it relies on the simple fact that when you pass current through something, it gets hot. It starts to dissipate heat. Now what I've done on the board here is set up a very simple circuit. We've got a power supply, we've got a switch, and we've got a load in the form of a resistor. And what we're going to do is use our lovely Mega AVO 835 in order to prove that this resistor is going to get hot as electricity passes through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up uh, and it's pointing at the temperature setting. So it's going to be measuring in degrees C. We'll also measure in degrees Fahrenheit but this is going to be measuring in degrees C. And what I'm going to do is plug in uh, this special uh, measuring probe, which is actually called a thermocouple. And we'll explain a little bit more about that in another video. But what we're going to do here is just plug that into our Mega AVO 835. And then on the end here, on this uh, little tip, you can see that there's sort of a connection made between two different little pieces of metal there. So what I'm going to do is just rest that onto our resistor, onto the body of the resistor there, and then I'm going to power up the circuit. So I'll get that hooked on there, and we'll start passing current through there. And can you see already, quite quickly actually, the temperature of that resistor is getting very, very hot. So now I've disconnected the power supply, and actually it's continuing to heat up quite a little bit there. So that will level off, and then in time that will start to drop down. It will probably take a lot longer to drop down in temperature than it will to go up in temperature, but you can see that the temperature rise there was quite significant and quite quick. So you can see that actually items get hot quite quickly when you pass current through them, depending on the circumstances that you've got them in. Now the temperature it'll get to depends on the current passing through it, how much current there is, how long it lasts for. But this is a really important principle because, as you can imagine, if we consider uh, that our just general conductors that we run through electrical installations to different loads, those conductors will also get hot as electricity passes through them. And that can represent some real dangers to the fabric of the building and also to the people inside the building. So it's very important to bear in mind that when we pass current through something, it gets hot. Let's just give it one more burst to prove a point. So the temperature's dropping, we'll start passing current through it again and you can see that the temperature is again rising pretty quickly. So there's quite a lot of current passing through here. I've deliberately, uh, I'm actually passing too much current through this resistor. It's going to overheat and fail soon. But uh, you can see there the temperature of that is getting very, very hot indeed. So we'll let that resistor cool down. Okay. And that nicely highlights 
the third effect of electricity, the thermal effect. So in this video, we've seen what the three effects of electricity are. We've got the chemical effect, the magnetic effect, and we've got the thermal effect. And that's the answer to a fairly common exam question. What are the three effects of electricity? Chemical, thermal, and magnetic is the answer to that one. So don't be tempted to think that it is shock, fire and explosion, or proton, neutron and electron. The answer is chemical, thermal and magnetic. Thank you very much for watching.